beauty in disguise Put your fist up in the sky Many of us are afraid to let go of control. Fear of letting go of control requires you to be committed and disciplined, allowing the true, authentic version of you to begin communicating with you by allowing us to feel areas where we are unfulfilled, areas where we feel disconnected from life, areas where we fail to see the beauty in the experience. Because being able to see the beauty in an experience shifts the outcome of that experience. So if I practice seeing the beauty in having a chronic illness and not resisting that that's in my present moment, not judging that to mean that I don't have access to well-being. So I'm stepping back from criticizing where I am in this present moment because my investment in my experience is not based on what I feel in this present moment because this present moment is beautifully unfolding and always changing. So as I share things, beliefs, subconscious programs, these baseline ways that we can sometimes respond to things and the meaning that we assign to circumstances. By choosing a more positive reframe of that circumstance you're experiencing, you open the navigation system right you before we had a navigation system we only had maps on pieces of paper that we had to read and try to drive at the same time well someone looked at that and said hey there's an easier way to do this and i'm going to create a gps system and we're going to use satellites and a navigation system and devices to direct people, somebody must have perceived that to be a pain in the ass. But it didn't keep them from being, um, believing in themselves enough to create something, to make this easier, you know, you got to have some level of faith to create something that hasn't been created yet. And I'm sure along the way, you have some failures. You have some things that don't go as well as you hoped that they would. But that doesn't mean you aren't going to access a solution to whatever is happening. It only means the solution to what's happening is outside of your baseline way of reading the purpose and situations and perceiving it either as an obstacle that is navigating you to finding remedies and solutions right um or it's an obstacle and it's absolutely nothing that i can do about it so i'm not going to even imagine that something is positive on the other side of this because you know like it's just another obstacle one problem after another when it rain it pours we we say these types of things and awakening is realizing wait that's my subconscious mind just looping what it has recorded 
throughout my lifetime. And maybe I grew up with other people who also had times where they doubted themselves, didn't have faith in themselves. Maybe those who raised me struggled to have faith in themselves up until a certain point, or maybe even still now, just in certain areas. And so maybe my perception of this is what's holding me back from where I feel I deserve to be and not the obstacle itself, but the way that I'm perceiving the obstacle. What subconscious programs are coming to the surface that are not in alignment with my fifth dimensional higher consciousness, fully aware that I'm an extension of source, that I am a soul having this human experience for the purpose of evolution. Am I going to answer that call? Am I going to just invest in myself? Because faith is self-investment. When you have faith and that faith leads to an action, when you're inspired and you plan and you take action, you're letting the universe know, I am worthy of that which I desire. And look, I'm going to make sure that I am navigating into that direction. I'm going to make sure that I'm doing something every single day that is navigating me in the direction of transformation and healing, becoming my I divinity, releasing the identity that's only focused on how I have been traumatized and wounded. There's much more to me than just trauma and wounds and things that I feel like I'm not doing as well as I should. There's so much more to me. How many things am I doing well that I'm overlooking? You know, like asking yourself this this question. This allows the energy of Jupiter, the expansion to move in. And we are in a Jupiter Kazemi astrologically, which basically means the planet of Jupiter, which is associated with abundance, prosperity, expansion, expansion of awareness is being fueled by the sun and the sun holds the mind. It is the structure of the mind. It controls the mind. The moon controls the heart. It's lunar, you know. So with the moon going into Scorpio, coming from Libra and into Sagittarius, we're going through these classrooms to experience these specific frequencies recorded throughout time, allowing us to go in swirls, right, and re-experience things as we are triggered to do so, so that we can discover beyond the glacier, beyond the wall of our consciousness, what we are actually afraid of and why we make the decisions that we do. It's so important to be able to be in touch with not just the fear, but what's behind this. Why do I feel this way? And, you know, by presenting the question, you are inviting the solution, the answer to come into your life. Every product that you have around you right now was created by someone who was answering a solution, bringing a solution to something, answering a problem, improving quality of life, right? So we're creating as well. Even if you don't create something physical, you're creating an energetic grid everywhere that you go. Now, it is easy to get hijack and for the amygdala which happens to be the region of the brain um, that fires off this fire of light right frequency throughout our brain and what happens is we begin emitting whatever we think about the most if it's non-beneficial for you and you're thinking about a lot of non-beneficial things and you don't challenge the thoughts where you don't find a new thought, a new way of perceiving it, where you're allowing yourself to marinate as you're ruminating in these thoughts that aren't yours and, and they're not relevant. They don't feel good. 
and you can feel that it's unnecessary and you don't like it. And this is when you become uncomfortable with some of the thoughts that you're having. Making peace with the mind. Uh, you know, letting the mind know I'm discovering parts of you where I repress experiences and, you know, certain false selves and egos took that place and took over. But I'm integrated now. And I am, you know, you're connecting with the subconscious, unconscious self, which rules most of our life. Habits are things that we have done so many times. We don't even question whether or not it's a habit that's beneficial to continue doing or is it keeping us away from something we would like to accomplish or have, you know. Some people want to lose weight and on the other side of getting an exam and loving themselves more and being more self-aware of what they're eating and getting tests done to see, you know, what their levels are like. These things are forms of love. We're taking care of our temple. Um, but when it comes to the mind, thoughts are, that's the astral rim. That's the fourth dimensional rim, which holds our collective thoughts that we create, creating a thought form, a cultural, societal belief in the 3D matrix, right? It's a program belief. And then we also have the things we're completely unconscious of that are like tentacles reaching energetically into our lives, transmitting, you know, things that we have repressed into a compartment because it was too difficult to deal with. And now it seems like some of that stuff maybe that you ignored, or if, even if not intentionally, maybe you didn't get acknowledged um, in a loving way when you were um, younger. And so because of that lack of validation, we are mammals, right? We thrive in tribes. We desire connection. That's life to us. That nourishes and sustains life. You know, um, newborn babies that weren't held by their mothers grew up to be traumatized children and adults. Because they, that first attachment with the mother was somehow interfered with. So, you know, a lot of that is coming up for us generationally. So if you're nine generations away, it's useful for you to know things like the frequency of your soul's essence. So that you will realize the shadow aspects of you, they aren't there for no reason. They aren't there to sabotage you. They're there to allow you to discover the root of something. To meet a new part and be integrated and just be aware that that experience created this fourth dimensional thought vibration. And just being willing to perceive it different. Just allow your heart to be open. So the way that I have been delving into my subconscious mind has been setting intentions before I go to sleep and mainly using three specific crystals. One of them is the obsidian and obsidian has this um, really dark, dark matter blackness to it. And this blackness is the depiction of the black dot. Okay, this is the pineal gland, the third eye perception is very much connected to obsidian. Anything that is able to reflect your physical image back to you has the ability to reflect back to you things that have been in darkness that you could not see. So by working with this crystal, by speaking my intentions, programming this crystal, to assist me as I am traveling the astral realm while I'm doing this thing called sleeping, right? That my subconscious mind, I'm able to receive those messages that I push away when I'm conscious through the day. Especially if I feel like I'm already going through a lot. 
I don't want anything to overwhelm me and I get in this hyper vigilant state and I'm scanning every single thought and emotion searching for a threat. That's basically what worry is and anxiety. You're searching for some type of threat. You're panicking about something that hasn't developed yet. You know, we we search for those things because we feel like if I go ahead and find something wrong with it, I can brace myself and then I won't get hurt later. Well, what if that's not true? Are you willing to allow yourself to be navigated to a different angle of perceiving that? That's going to allow you to see something that you haven't allowed yourself to see when you're awake, when you're conscious. So when we're sleeping, we're in the astral realm, and this is uh, one of the most powerful times to be able to reprogram the subconscious mind. Every single night, by me using a strategy that I'm going to be teaching in in the Dream Interpretation Masterclass coming up on April 20th, 2023, I have been able to retrieve some of my deepest fears. I have been able to remember Some of the dreams that I had when I was a child. Some of the ways that I believed in myself before the programming that I received. All of that is coming back to me. So I prayed with the obsidian. Have my dream catcher position. My head is facing a very specific direction to assist in subconscious reprogramming, lucid dreams, and increases your ability to be directed in a position while you're sleeping to keep you tethered to the station that's in natural alignment, not artificial, you know, but natural alignment, organic. Okay, by sleeping that way and using this, I asked Obsidian, show me my deepest fear so that I can be aware of it and integrate it. Because if I'm not aware that there is a fear that is in the background controlling some of the things happening in my day to day life, if I'm not willing to see that. Do I really want to heal if I'm unwilling to look at myself? Because if I don't discover the holes that's been poked in the being of who I am, I can't fill it in with anything. I can't plant a new seed. I can't write a new verse. I'm completely unaware that a particular fear is what has been instructing right, my beliefs, which are creating decisions that I'm making and the decisions that I'm making are showing up as circumstances and the circumstances with each passing day become my reality and my reality now is also merging with people in my life, my spouse, my children, people that I work with and I'm learning to be more aware of the energy that I'm in and what I'm transmitting if I need time to myself. Because I'm aware I'm processing some deep wounds and I'm able to have structure in creating that. So when you do this, when you create structure before you fall asleep, okay, you're giving the invitation for you to integrate the shadow aspects of you that you are afraid to face. And this is so beautiful that we as human beings can choose to do this and have tools to support us in doing this. On the sixth night of me doing this, um, I had a dream. And in that dream, I was reminded of the previous dream where I saw myself teaching these things. Um, And in that dream, I saw this, um, how do you describe it? 
It was a parallel reality because it felt just a little different. Kind of like when you get on a plane and get off in a different city and you might not have traveled outside the airport, but it feels very different, right? That's you picking up on the psychometry of a location. So there's not only repressed parts of you that you feel like are negative in the shadow self, those are, there are positive parts of you as well. Um, and they all hold their own energetic signature when they come up. So the way that you add meaning to that changes everything. So if you can acknowledge that while you are sleeping, you are getting closer to that which you desire. And you go to sleep with that intention and you allow yourself to um, f face some of the things you need to face, to be aware of. Um, you know... That's such a gift because in that sacred space while we're sleeping, right before we fall asleep, drifting into theta, we're highly um, in that moment programmable. We can hypnotize ourselves for positive purposes. And many of us worry and ruminate on negative things a lot. So what happens is you're actually hypnotizing yourself to focus on the negative and the more you uh, focus on the negative and stay there the more you are ingraining that neural pathway in your brain to perceive it as such so by you working with these particular crystals that I'm going to be sharing you are clearing the third eye um, to be used to navigate and um and so some of the fears that's been coming up for me were connected to feeling abandoned and rejected, feeling like I was just a mistake born into this world. It shouldn't have been for so long that tormented me, not being accepted um, fully, like having to deal with friends and people, associates and coworkers being jealous of you like that's hurtful. You don't want to experience that. And oftentimes the people on the other end of that don't feel like they're being that way. So we didn't get closure for a lot of stuff. So it's coming up right now. By having a process, a routine, a spiritual practice that you discipline yourself to be committed to doing, no matter how many times you feel like you're not doing it right or it's not effective, you just continue to do it. That investment in yourself, it could just be five minutes, but by you investing in yourself and meditating and doing that, you're planting seeds of your choosing. You're scripting your life with new verses. No longer singing a trauma song, but saying there's something on the other side of trauma. I know that this there is triumph on the other side of this. I know that. I have the capability to heal whatever this is, because if I didn't, it wouldn't be showing up. And I can choose what I focus on. By doing that, you hypnotize yourself to love yourself a little more. Each moment you do this, each time you do this before falling asleep. So um, so that masterclass is going to be on the 20th, as I said, of April 2023, 7 p.m. CST. Join us. For this epic event, this will be the last master class that I'm going to do for a month or a month or two. I'm going to take some time off to be healing some of the things that I'm doing to take care of myself that I've been definitely, definitely in need of doing. Um, but I'm going to need some time to heal afterwards. So this will be the last master class. And join me if this is resonating with you. Because I'm telling you, you have been activated and the ability for you to heal certain things um, that you needed to search for something outside of you to give you faith that you were going in the right direction. Like that's no more. That's old earth belief system. That's an old earth 3D matrix prison plan and social construct. And it's just with each passing day that you don't do something different, you're reaffirming the trauma reenactments. And so you're not able to break the loops. 
But by changing one thing, you can break out of the loop. And so many solutions have come to me by doing this work. I will also be sharing with you the top herbs to assist you in this journey and the deities that I have been using to guide me into higher consciousness. One is male, one is female. Bring in the balance of the male-female. Bring in the balance of the right brain, left brain. Those two hemispheres carry feminine energy, which is the right brain, and the masculine energy, which is left. Masculine energy is our logic, our instinct oftentimes, our reasoning. The right brain is our creativity. It's our ability to be receptive. So you're not transmitting anything. You have moments to be receptive. Prayer is about speaking out, transmitting something into your vibrational field. Meditation is allowing yourself to drift into a space to receive that wave of consciousness back connected to what you have asked for so that it can be given to you. And oftentimes we don't know when to open up ourselves to receive and when to give and transmit a certain energy or belief. Because whenever you take an action based in a belief or an emotion, you're transmitting something into the frequency um, of the quantum field around you. You know, um, so we're energetic beings and we leave an energetic signature. Um, so in this class, I'm also going to be sharing with you the products that I've been using, which will all be available in our store. And you're going to get 30% off of every product in our store that's going to be given to you during the master class. You will also receive a third eye sound bowl activation. And this is a sound healing session to activate the pineal gland, activate the third eye, to infuse your awareness, your conscious mind with the frequency that matches the third eye so that you are able to align your perception with a higher perception. So it's like a telescope strength to see the cosmos, to see into your subconscious mind which is the below version of the cosmos. It's the darkness. It's the space. It's the unknown for us. It's like the land we haven't really traveled to or don't remember that we traveled to. So in that class, I'll be sharing that. Be sure to leave a comment below. Let me know what was the main takeaway from this transmission, from this video, this information I'm sharing with you, what was the main thing that really stuck with you? Drop your comment below because this helps us to see where we're connecting and it allows us to experience resonance as well. If we don't speak up, speak out to be heard, we don't create resonance for another soul to add the power of their awareness with us. So this is the purpose and power of resonance, us having a similar um, vibrational field that we are aware of. Once we continue doing that, we are sending each other strength as we are doing better on our own journey instead of trying to fix people. People by default would experience a higher vibration by us doing this work. So so many benefits in this dream work not just gathering subconscious information that's affecting your life, but even learning about your past lives and learning about your twin flame and how, how they're going to make you feel, how you're going to feel as a result of your twin flame, um, which we have more than one twin flame. But again, I, through dreams, attracted my relationship with Ernest. I knew that he was coming. And so it was so much easier for me to make the decision to go on this sacred journey of partnership with him while we were both awakening. But if I didn't know how to do the dream work 
and to work on myself, supporting myself with particular practices that I'm doing every day. Well, I can't receive what it is that I'm asking for because I'm not in the location. I'm not on the channel to hear, you know, the information that I need. I just need to change the station. And this is most powerfully done while we are sleeping. All right. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Maybe I should have said this sooner, but I appreciate so much if you would do that because it helps other people to find this information. Thank you for your donations. And for those of you who want to go deeper into some of the um, intergalactic programs, galactic history, things of that nature, information about star seeds, I have the vault for that that has the last five years of some of the most amazing discoveries and metaphysical lectures and just so much information you really are not going to find on this platform. All of the links for that will be below so thank y'all y'all already know what it is may your third eye Royalty is just in disguise